Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is a podcast for you. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown, and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, where, you know, we talk about all the things nobody ever told you could possibly maybe happen in real estate on one of those days that is like no other. Well, today, I'm excited to bring you Trisha Beam, because Trisha has a story that generated a lot of comments and what on Facebook, which is always a good one. Trisha, say hello. Hello. I'm Trisha Beam from the Jersey Shore. But you are not related to those wild people on that MTV program, right? <laughs> no, that's a few towns south of me, but I do cover most of the Jersey Shore, and I've been a realtor for about 20 years. So on a side note, did that do anything for your real estate business or just generate better conversations? It generated better conversations, but it also did bring a sense of identity in a way to uh, some of the Jersey Shore. They kind of knew what the party towns were after that show. Oh, so there's a there's a bright side to everything, I would say. Yep. Okay, Trisha, before you tell your story, let me give you the ground rules of the podcast, which are pretty basic. You can pretty much say what you want except for the F-bomb, GD, or see you next Tuesday because I'm allergic to the really ugly words. And if there are guilty parties involved, don't use their real names so that if they fuss, they're the ones that outed themselves. So with that being said, I cannot wait to hear the whole story. So... This has to do with uh, walkthroughs and final walkthroughs and when you don't close on time. I had a listing in a town, a few towns from where my office is. Um, it had been a listing that was a vacant home. I didn't really know the sellers, but I had met them a few years before. They had a family member that was living in the house that was at one time going to purchase it from them, and I guess... The owner was holding the mortgage, and the payments weren't made, and they finally got the family member out of the house. So I had met with them before, and then I got a call a year and a half later and said, we are going to sell the house. Um, Can you meet us on on this day? And I went and met the family. Uh, There was a whole group of them, and uh, the house was pretty much vacant. We listed the house. It sold right away. We're scheduled to have a closing on a Friday. And the other agent, the selling agent, did the walkthrough. I was there for the walkthrough. We went to the closing. Uh, there were some issues. The buyer, the mortgage company needed some clarification. So we did not close on Friday. It got rescheduled for Monday afternoon, and I did not go back to the closing because I had already taken the lockbox off, taken my sign down. I got a call after it closed that it had closed, and... Within an hour, I got a call from the agent that sold the house telling me that there was an entire basement flooded with oil from the oil tank that was full in the basement and that there was a lot of uh, things going on in the hall, in the upstairs bathroom, and someone had broken the window to get in. Oil as in heating oil? Heating oil, yeah. It was an above-ground tank in the basement. That's awful. And it was a very full tank. And oh, and not even just the mess, the amount of money that spilled out in there. Holy smokes. And I felt really bad for the, for the buyers because, you know, God, who wants to move into a house that way and start your new chapter in life? I really didn't know what to do, so I did go speak with my manager, and she said that really the fault was with the agent, uh, the selling agent, that didn't go back and do another, you know, walkthrough that day prior to the closing. And I've always remembered that uh, in every closing I had that didn't close, I always insisted we do another walkthrough. If you're a consumer listening to this, let me tell y'all what Trisha is talking about with a walkthrough. That's in real estate. That's when we go back to the house at the last minute, generally after all the furnishings are out so that we can see that the house is in the same or better condition as it was at the time of the offer. So when she's talking about a delayed closing and a couple days later, it's where you're still doing the same aspect, but you're checking the house one more time. So with that, Trisha, carry on. We do have a lot of consumers that enjoy this show and don't um, live our language. I understand (laughs) completely. A few days later, I got a call from the selling agent again. We actually turned it over, um, just as a side note, to our legal department. 
in case, you know, any questions needed to be answered or anything. But I did get a call a few days later, and she said to me, did you see the newspaper? And I said, no, why? And she said, the person that lived in that house is a murderer. He's charged with murder. And come to find out... Isn't this a cousin or part of the family of the settlement, It was, it you was say? a relative, yes. It was a relative. <laughs> and he was charged with murder with actually cutting up and dismembering somebody's body and putting it in a freezer down in Florida. But not in not in this house. <laughs> not, no, it wasn't done in that house. I mean, thank goodness, because that probably would have really scared uh, the, the new owners off and probably would have gone right back up for sale. But we... He had just gotten arrested in New Jersey, and char he got charged with this murder, and, you know, it was kind of assumed by the selling agent that maybe it was him that broke into this house. We don't really know. You know, we never found out proof on that or not, but I kept thinking of all the times I was at that house by myself, at night, changing a light bulb, doing an open house. And it really gave me pause to think that I really needed to let people know where I was, at, especially at night, um, going to a vacant house. Because it really, it, it has stuck with me all these years, and this was a number of years ago. It's just there's so many different truths in those last couple of sentences that you said. There's not just that the crazy stuff happens, and there's people that you don't have any idea what kind of people they are. But yeah, we are out there by ourselves a lot, and it's not a female or male thing. It's just we're by ourselves in so many instances, and how would you know that this guy had dismembered a body? Yep, no, had no clue. Nobody in the family ever spoke about what kind of person, you know, he was or anything. And I kind of, like, was a little resentful, too, that they didn't tell me the story. Or at least, you know, said to me, be careful when you go there. I mean, not that this was, you know, I mean, the house was in a great residential suburbia area. You would never know, you know, anything ever transpired over there like that or never heard of anything that transpired like that. See, and that's where, I mean, honestly, in this politically correct society, people are afraid to say anything, even when it's information that you need to know so that you can be on alert. It's not that you're going to do or say anything differently to that guy, but you'd have been awake for it. Yep, exactly. Like, you know, I mean, you know, obviously the family knew. And, you know, not that they had to tell me the story or anything, or, but just if you ever saw anybody lurking around the house or on the street, you know, stalking the house or anything, or some, you know, something that would have, you know, given me a little red flag. So there's there's so many so many tales of caution in this for our listeners to catch. So first of all, if you're a consumer, you should absolutely go to the walkthrough with your agent. When we call and schedule that with you, please don't blow us off because Trisha has demonstrated very clearly why we want you with us to check out a house and realtors don't blow it off either just because it's empty and you've seen it one time that does not cover you for the future. And then I think we also know don't rent your house to family members, Trisha. That's a little hidden <laughs> nugget in here. Um, I think we should say those are not your best tenants. Not, not your best tenants, but these, these people are actually going to purchase the house over a number of years. They were kind of doing a lease purchase with the owner. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we try to explain to people why lease purchases don't happen, but now we're going to have a cousin dismembering people who wanted a lease purchase. He was like the worst mm -hmm. possible prospect for that house. It was interesting because I kept wondering why the whole family met me except for this person. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, the son, the daughter, the mother, all of them. <laughs> Which is like red flag, red flag, red flag. <laughs> yeah, when I listed the property. And I said, well, maybe they just want to make sure their mother is taken care of and, you know, everything is up and up. And, and but it, it, it just was <laughs> an empty house. Yeah, and then I found out a few months later. And I'll also say the other important point here is that it's okay as a realtor to look after your own safety. And as a consumer, if your realtor wants to check your ID or meet you at a coffee shop or something before they go to your house, honor that request because often we're not trying to be an inconvenience. We're trying to protect our safety and yours. Absolutely. Very, very key. And I really say to all my fellow realtors out there, please make sure if you're out at night by yourself, that someone knows where you're going. I mean, we've heard other horror stories afterwards, 
you know, of things that have happened in the recent last few years, but it really is. I, I mean, I have done that since this happened. Anytime that I'm out at night showing properties. And lastly, Tricia, if anybody is looking for an amazing professional realtor who's got two decades and counting of real estate experience, how could they find you up on the Jersey Shore? You can find me at the Jersey Shore. I cover pretty much the central Jersey Shore area, which is Bradley Beach, Elmar, Asbury Park, Wall Township, Point Pleasant Beach, Manasquan. I sell all kinds of residential real estate. My number is 732-766-2985, and I work for Coldwell Banker Residential. And if any agents have any referrals to the Jersey Shore area, I'd be happy to uh, help them out. And you could probably help them even if it's an area you don't service. Couldn't you give them a name? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I will include all of Trisha's contact information in the show notes for this episode. So if you're driving down the road on the way to an appointment or sweating to the oldies, you don't have to stop for a moment. You can still reach out to her at any time for all of your Jersey Shore needs. Trisha, thank you for showing up on the podcast. I appreciate your story with all its twists and turns and good words of caution for all of us. And the crazy thing is... The oil in the basement seems like such a non-issue after everything else that went on. Yeah, unfortunately, it was uh, it was a massive cleanup though for for new owners, and probably an expense that they never you know counted on. And if you're a realtor, inspector, lender, broker, or a consumer with your own story about something crazy that went on in your real estate dealings, tweet me at Lee Brown or shoot me a message on any of the social networks, and I'll be glad to feature you on this show so that we can continue to uncover the other side of real estate. for joining us this week on the Crazy Shit in Real Estate podcast. If you liked what you heard, please visit crazyshitinrealestate.com where you can access the full show notes for this episode, additional content produced exclusively for listeners, and much, much more. 